And I want to just talk a little bit around the power of being connected. The power of being connected. And if I had a subtopic, it would be the power of agreement. John, the 15th chapter, the first verse reads, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser and every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear even more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you for abide in me and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. I have read into your hearing, John, the 15th chapter, the first through the eighth verse. And we're going to talk about this true vine of God. And we want to talk about how he is saying, if we abide in him, we see this word coming over and over and over again in the scripture, abide, abide, abide. And what abide is, it is when you are accepting and in accordance with something. You are accepting and you are in accordance with something. You are in agreement. You are in agreement. You are connected. And he says, if you abide in me, then that allows me to abide in you. We sing songs of glory where we talk about we welcome the Holy Spirit in. We welcome Jesus in. When we get saved, we allow Jesus to come into our life as Savior. But what he's saying in this instance is, I want you to translate me from not just being Savior, but to being an indwelling presence of being Lord in your life. I want us to have an exchange. I want you to understand that there is nothing that is impossible for you as long as you are connected to me as long as you stay in the vine as long as you abide in me he says in the scripture he says every branch that doesn't bear fruit God removes it so we're not fooling anyone if we think that we're giving lip service to God and our hearts are far away from him that's why we go to him in humility that's why we stay before the cross in repentance that's why we do self reflection and evaluations we do these things so that we can stay connected to the vine why because he deals with the humble he deals with the humble and the proud he brings low. And so when we understand that as we're coming to him, he says, listen, if you bearing fruit, God got to prune you. If you stay with me, I'm going to prune you so you can bear more fruit. Meaning I'm going to come and I'm going to check you on some stuff. I'm going to send some people in your life that's going to be that's going to be abrasive. I'm going to send some trials in your life. I'm going to send some things in your life that's going to prune you. If you know anything about gardening, if you have a plant, a pruning is where you take though they're like special scissors and you go and you clip the part that's sucking out of the plant, but not being fruitful. So when you prune off those dead ends or it allows the fruit, the tree to be more fruitful, it's kind of like with your hair. When you trim your dead ends, it allows your hair to grow back even more luxurious. And that's what God says. If I'm abiding in you, 
and my and my father, we're going to bear more fruit. And the way that we're going to do that is those areas of your life that are not suitable to me. Those areas to, of your life that are still not quite purified. Those areas of your life that are hidden. Those areas of your life where I don't have full access to. I'm going to prune you in those areas, but you have to allow me. This whole section is about allowance. You have to allow him because he says, I am the true vine and my daddy the father is the vine dresser that means that is the person who takes care of the vineyard he is the true vine jesus is the vine but god the father we're dealing with the trinity here god the father dresses the vine he cares for it, but jesus is the vine and as he is the way the truth and the life no man come unto the father but by him so what does that mean if he is the true vine then out from the vine you get all shoots which are called branches so he begins to connect this picture, this parable of the vine and the branches with our relationship with him. And because we are the branches, he says, you have to abide in me and I in you. Because what happens to a branch when it breaks off a tree? It withers and it dies. A branch can only stay alive and be productive as long as it's connected to the tree. It must be connected to the tree. It must be connected to the vine because that's the life source. People of God, God has a standard for our life. God has not moved in your life. If you feel that you are far away from God, that is the stain of sin because sin separates us from God. He is the same and he changes not. There are times where we may feel that God goes silent, but he has not left us. And in those times, that's when we self-reflect. That's when we go deeper in the word. That's when we go deeper in praise and worship. That is when we go to the elders for prayer. But that is not the time when we run off and go further away from God on those times where you feel that God is distance that means that we need to come back to him that we need to come back to his standard that we need to come back to him so because he is divine and he is providing our life source people of God if you feel like you are dry people of God if you feel like you are dying and are withering come back to the life source because that is something about gardening they have something called tree grafting where even with a, a graft of a tree is when you take the source, hallelujah, when you take the source of a tree, it could be a mango tree, hallelujah, and if you cut inside the mango tree and you go get a branch that's from a lemon tree or a branch that's from a lime tree and you take it and you place it inside of the cut that you made in the source of the mango tree and you begin to wrap it and insulate it, it becomes a tree graft and what begins to happen is that branch that was from the lemon tree that was laying down off to the side that would have died because its source was cut off because now you have grafted it into the mango tree it can produce fruit hallelujah because we know that when God when Jesus came he came first he came first to his people and then he came to everyone else and we were engrafted in and what that means is it does not matter who you are or where you have come from God's family is an engrafted family and as long as we are abiding in him his life source then can abide in us and we can still grow and produce fruit the branch cannot bear of itself. We must abide in the vine. And he says, and neither can you unless you abide in me. Meaning that nothing in our life is going to work right. It's not going to function in perfect alignment. It's not going to click as it needs to if we're not abiding in God. Because when we abide in God, we know that even when test and tribulation and persecution come, we know that we are still standing. We can go through everything the world goes through, but because we have a blessing assurance which is Jesus Christ our lifeblood causes us not to go down whether we get COVID or not our lifeblood causes us not to go down whether the people of God have a loss or a hit 
or a repossession or an eviction or they are in a situation where they have lost loved ones our life force as long as we are engrafted in the vine we find strength in our weakness he said let the weak say I am strong because as long as we are connected to him as long as we are connected in the kingdom then his life force becomes our life force and we are able to produce fruit he is the vine and we are the branches. That's how we bear much fruit. For without him, we can do nothing. The enemy will make us think that we're prospering without God, but it only lasts for a season. The Bible says, fret not yourself for evildoers because they'll be cut down like grass. Don't, don't, don't worry about people who you think is flourishing right now and you look at them and their life looks like this and that, but you know that they're, they're, that, 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 that they're living um, outside of the will of God because I'm telling you, you continue to hold up the banner for Christ. You continue to walk in subjection to Jesus Christ and abide in him because I guarantee you when the trials of life come, they will be looking for someone to pray. They will be looking for someone to impart a word they will be looking for someone to sit with them and counsel them and I guarantee you it won't be the same person that they were out with it will be the person that they look and they saw were living a different life people of God people are looking for a difference of life they are looking for us to make different decisions they are looking for us to not only be in the vine but be to connect it in the vine and that the fruit of Jesus be shown in our life and the way that the fruit of Jesus is shown in our life, he says in the seventh verse, if we abide in him, my words will abide in you. That means people of God, that we should have a word in season and out of season. You should have a word on your lips when someone calls. You should have a word that you can text through the phone. You should have a word that you can put on social media because the Bible, we know that the gospel is the good news. He says, how will I know that you're abiding in me? Because as I'm giving you my life force from heaven, you go sound like heaven. You're going to sound like me. You're going to decree and declare like me. You're going to have the rhythm of heaven. My words will abide in you and you. my words abide in you. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way that our mind can be renewed is through Christ Jesus and that way we get his thoughts because we know that the Bible says that God's thoughts are not our thoughts and so the way that we cleanse that, the way that we get the the thoughts of God is by abiding in him. And when our thoughts become his thoughts through a transfer, a transformed mind, our words become his words. And when we are able to deliver his words, we are able to deliver a lost and dying world. People of God, we must abide in him. He said, and then whatever we ask and desire, it shall be done by this. The father will be glorified and we will bear much fruit. If your fruit, if you're in a season where your fruit is not bearing much, if you're in a season where you feel like I, I don't know Lord I don't know Lord you could very well be in a wilderness but that does not mean that God has left you but I say tonight stay connected to the vine don't leave God because let me tell you don't give up on God because he won't give up on you stay connected to the vine stay getting on prayer calls stay attending virtual church go to a physical church go to your brethren I don't care if you have to have a mask because the Bible says that whether there are two or three gathered, I shall be in the midst. Do not, do not get away from corporate agreement because what happens is when the branches start connecting together, then there becomes a sound of heaven because all of us are out from the same life source. When my branch connects to your branch, connects to your branch, there is power. There is a synergy that is created and what begins to happen is we are all strengthened. For the glory of God. He says that whatever you will ask and whatever you desire shall be done for you. Through your faith, I'm not going to withhold nothing from you. I'm not going to withhold nothing from you. We have to redirect that faith into the right area. When we redirect and we're able to step out in God, we're able to step out in God because we know that as long as we stay connected to God, our desires shall be of his and then he is able to. To give us what we ask. Sometimes we ask for stuff and we don't get it because our desires are amiss. He said you ask what you ask amiss. You're asking for stuff that's not in my will. You can't ask for stuff that's not in God's will and expect him to do it. We can't ask for things that are against God's nature and, and expect him to do it. 
But he says, when your mind is transformed, if you connect it to me, the true vine, if you allow my father to prune you, if you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, then as your thoughts and your mind begin to be transformed, then your words going to be transformed and you're not going to pray crazy stuff. The stuff that you pray is going to be in the will of God. You're going to pray the will of God for your life. And how do you know the will of God? Because you're going to study the word. The word of God lets us know the will of God for our life. The Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. He says that he wants to give us good gifts. He says that we are blessed coming in and blessed going out. He says that we are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. He says that he wants to give his children good gifts. He says that he shall repay us in this life a hundred times. His word lets us know how we should pray. But we have to be in his word and his word has to be hidden in our hearts, people of God. This is a seed in what God wants to have us winning. This is a season where in our faith and in our connection and in our abiding with him. Because remember, abiding is accepting and standing in accordance with. Remember, abiding is agreement with. So what does that mean? Does that mean that when I mess up or... I'm not, you know, like, 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 you know, you know, like I got off track or, uh, uh, does that mean that, that, that I, I'm a broken branch and, and, and God can't use me? Absolutely not. People of God, if I have like learned anything in my walk with Christ, in my walk with Christ and being a minister of Christ over the last 20 years, what I have learned is the ability to be grafted back in more quickly. Because what maturity in God shows you is that your is that your your position is not changed by your condition. It shows you that your position and your is not changed by your performance. Performance. It shows that when I was young in Christ, if I was to mess up or if I was to get off track or my branch was breaking down, I would stay away from people of God. I would stay out from the church because I would think the prophet or somebody would knew what I did. And then I would make myself feel worse and I would go in the sackcloth and ashes and it would take me a while to get back on track. And then I would cause me to be in a quasi backslidden state because I felt like God was a punitive God that was hitting me crossed the head and he didn't love me because I made mistakes and God had to show me and prove to me that baby you are mine my DNA is within you and as long as you are connected to the vine he had to take me through the word study he had to show me David that David was abiding in God whether he was on the mountaintop or in the valley David was acknowledging God in all his ways whether he was on the victory field or he was coming out of sackcloth and ashes. David was acknowledging God and it did not matter if he was caught up in the sin of killing Uriah or he was caught up in being king over 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 Israel. David stayed connected to God. And I said, well, God, how can one stay connected even after a fault? He said, because what you have to understand is that when they abide in me, I'm not calling them to be perfect. I'm just calling them to stay connected. For those of you taking notes, he's not calling you to be perfect. He's calling you to stay connected. He's not calling you to have a hundred percent attitude all the time. That's perfect. He's not calling you to pray 17 times a day. That's perfect. He's not calling you not to, not to have a relapse of this or that and be perfect. But what he's causing you is to stay connected. He's causing you to say that the same God that you honor when you are getting on the stage and you are getting the awards is the same God. I want you to honor when you fell off the track. I want you to stay connected to me. I don't want you to slip off in doubt and doubt that I'm still your father. I don't want you to think that I don't love you because you did not perform. I am not a performance based God. I am your father. And because I am your father, your DNA causes me to be good to you. I stay connected in my strengths. I stay connected in my weaknesses. 
And as you mature in God, you realize that even Lord, if I, if I fell in fear, or I came in agreement with fear, or I came in agreement with anxiety, or I came in agreement with lack, or I came in agreement with, I'm not going to make it. You can break those agreements and get back into the agreement with God. But that does not mean that God has cast you out because you believed a deception. That don't mean that God cast you out because you were afraid. And that doesn't mean that you're less of a Christian because you're wearing your mask and that doesn't mean that you are less in faith because you choose not to do what other people are doing because what we must remember is that he gives us all a measure of faith and it looks different some people have the faith of a mustard seed and some people have a gift of faith where they are able to rock miracles but whatever faith he gets giving you if you stay connected to the vine and you keep your faith rooted in him I guarantee you that your faith will grow because faith is like a muscle and it grows the more you use it and the more that you come out of agreement with fear and the more that you line up with your faith in God it's going to grow you have to grow people of God my 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 you have to grow people of God the faith you had in 2018 it ain't gonna work for 2020 my God, the faith you had in 2019 ain't going to work for 2021. You got to grow people of God. You got to grow people of God. Cause when the blessings are coming from the North, South, East and the West, when they are too big for you, people of God, you got to grow. You got to grow. We grow when we cast our nets. We grow when we meet people whose faith is bigger than ours and we choose to connect with them. When we take our branch and we connect it to other branches. When we understand and discern that this spirit is of God. When we speak it out of our mouths. When we step out in faith and God meets us there. Let the weak say I am strong. He say I am made perfect in your weakness. So in my strength and weakness alike, I must stay connected to the vine. He's not calling us to be perfect. He just wants us to walk with him and stay connected to the vine. Walk with him. I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with him. Abide in him so that he can abide in us. God's faithfulness to us is not based on our condition. But because we are redeemed. Because we are his investment. Because we have his DNA. The blessing does not change because you got afraid. The blessing does not change because you were offended. The blessing does not change because your relationship ended. The blessing does not change because they walked away and they left. The blessing does not change because what you thought you could depend on, your job, your finances is no longer there. The blessing does not change because you were betrayed. The blessing does not change because you may have been the betrayer. The blessing does not change because you was caught in a lie. The blessing does not change. It remains intact. The blessing remains intact because we come in agreement with God. And when we come in agreement with God, we can abide in him. And when we are abiding in him, it causes the blessing to remain intact. So what does he say? He say, I'm the vine. My father is the vine dresser. And if you're going to stay connected to me in your strength and your weaknesses, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to prune you. So I'm going to say, now, you know, you was real short with them and you shouldn't have them people out. I got to prune you. I got to prune you because my goal is to get you to be like Christ. You're going to be a work in progress, but I need you to be more Christ-like. Your attitude was bad. I got to prune you. You're still holding unforgiveness. I got to prune you. You still have a problem with being a giver. And as long as you got something in your hand, you can't receive. So since you got a problem with being a giver, I got to prune you. God is not a man that he should lie. I told you to trust me, but you went and trusted yourself. I got to prune you. I told you I would make a way, but you had doubt. So I have to prune you. And his pruning allows us to bear more fruit. Because what his pruning does is it allows us to see where we have fallen short and to get it right. 
He does not expose where we fall short for us to fall back and to run away. He shows us so we can get it right. He shows us so that we can bear even more fruit. He shows us in the private so that it is not exposed in the public. He shows us so that we can get it right on the altar. He shows us so that we can have compassion on someone else because the same God that had to have mercy on us requires us to have mercy on others. In his prayer, he said, forgive those who have trespassed against us so that you may forgive our trespasses. Because if I am bestowing this upon you, I want you to bestow it upon others. The love that he has given us, he wants us to bestow it upon others. He prunes us. He prunes us. Because what happens is if he does not prune us and we fall off as branches, those are the branches that are to be thrown into the fire. But as long as you stay connected, you can be painful, you could be backslidden, but God needs for you to get it right because there's a work for you to do, man and woman of God on the call tonight. I don't care what happened, there's a work for you to do. And I guarantee you, if you repent and you go to God and you confess and you have a broken and a contrite spirit and you repent and turn and ask for his strength in your area of weakness. He will graft you back in. He will take your branch and place it on his tree and begin to insulate and wrap you until you begin to grow and flourish once again. For those of you who have been away too long, come back. For those of you who are slipping, come back. For those of you who've been in a dark place, come back. Come back to the vine. I adjure you on the night to come back to the vine. Because there's a work that has to be done. There are people that are waiting for you to get right so that they can get saved and that their household can be saved. There are people that are waiting for the word that is coming out of your mouth. There are people that are waiting for you to write that book. There are people that are waiting for you to start that ministry. There are people that are waiting for you to start that school. There are people that are waiting for you to start that restaurant. There are people that are waiting for you to get that job in government. There are people that are waiting Waiting for you. So I don't care how far you may have fallen or how far you may have ran. You need to come back to the vine so that you can be engrafted with the thoughts of the most high. So that your words can be the words of the most high. So that his words can abide in you and your desires may be his desires. And you may complete the will of God that was spoken over your life. And for those of you who have been in God and you have been waiting and you have been waiting, you say, God, I've been waiting a long time now. I, my, my, my thoughts is right. I, I'm going through one thing after another. I don't understand, Lord. I've been waiting a long time. I've been waiting a long time. I've been waiting a long time. What I want you to know is that without patience, we will abort our increase. But God says for those of you that have waited long, I am coming and my reward is with me. I am coming and my reward is with me. You had a special order and you are right on schedule. I need you to know that you are right on time in God. For those of you who have been abiding in him and he has been abiding in you, you are right on time with God. You are right on time with his purposes. So I want you to stop that thought pattern of I should have been further than this. I should have had more money than this. I should have been married by now. I should have had a child by now. You are where you are supposed to be because you are ordered by God. Your steps are ordered by God and because you are right on schedule that means you are right on time and I need you to get that in your spirit. Your spirit needs to hear that you are right on time that God has not forgotten but he was preparing things for you and in the preparation you need to know that you are on schedule. He had to work some things out behind the scenes because the scheduling of 
of God is not your time, but he wants you to understand that you are where you're supposed to be. Whether you got a degree or not, hallelujah. You are where you supposed to be, whether you got a church building or not. You are where you're supposed to be, whether you have a spouse or not. You are where you're supposed to be, whether you have a child or not. You are where you're supposed to be, whether you have the use and activity of your limbs and your health or not. God has you where he wants you and you are right on schedule for the plans and the purposes of God in your life. As long as you abide in him and you trust in him, your desires will be made full in him. You are where you are supposed to be. Don't allow someone else's life to make you think that you should be further along. No, you weren't supposed to be in Vegas this weekend. You were supposed to be where you was. No, you weren't supposed to have that car yet. You supposed to have a car that you got right now for this particular moment. You are where you need to be so that he can continue to prune you so that you can bear more fruit. You're going to the place that he said. You're going to that mountaintop, but on your way there, please do not despise humble beginnings. Please do not despise the place you're in now because it's not what you expected. Please do not despise the place you're in now because you started out and a lot of people was liking it, but now they're not liking it. Or you had a lot of sponsors and you had a lot of people that were supporting, but now you don't have a lot of people that supporting. I say stay connected to the vine. I don't care if you was getting a lot of donations and now you're not getting none. Stay connected to the vine because you're right on schedule. You're right on schedule. You're right on schedule. You are where you are supposed to be in God. Just stay connected to the vine. And if you're on the call tonight, stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to God because in God, there is agreement. Hallelujah. And through the power of agreement is where we are able to chase 10,000. That is where we are able to see exponential increase. Hallelujah. You are right on schedule and we must stay aligned with what he has already asked us what we have asked him for you asked him for the house stay aligned I don't care if you're in an apartment you asked him for the house stay aligned I don't care if you're sleeping in somebody else's rented room or on a sofa you asked him for the house it is on the way what I need you to understand is he said yes to the house when you asked him for it he knows that you're on the sofa he knows that you're in an apartment he said yes but I can't get you to abort the mission because if you abort the mission you abort and what he already said yes on he already said yes to the money he already said yes to the spouse he already said yes to the children in your womb he already said yes to the ministry he already said yes to the multi-million dollar multi-purpose center he already said yes but I can't get you to abort the mission on tonight because it has been too long. People of God, stay connected in the vine. Hallelujah. I don't care if everybody you know went before you. Hallelujah. You are right on time. I don't care if you feel like you got a turtle shell on your back and you moving slow. Continue to move with the shell because you are right on time. And as long as you stay connected to the vine, as long as you abide in him, hallelujah, he will be bore his desires within you you will be able to, to, to speak and declare a thing and it shall come to pass it was already a yes over your life hallelujah you must come out of agreement with the no you must come out of agreement with doubt you must come out of agreement with fear you must come out of agreement with death hallelujah I decree you shall live and not die your purpose shall live and not die your children shall live and not die your finances shall live and not die your spirit shall live and not die you must choose life this day hallelujah the way you choose life is by stay connected to the vine you must stay connected to him because as long as you are connected as long as you are connected to the true vine hallelujah the vine dresser the father will make sure that you bear much fruit you will bear fruit Good fruit and due season. Hallelujah. You will bear fruit. Good fruit and due season. And it don't matter if it's going down to the left or the right. It should not come nigh your dwelling. Because you're winning. And even if you think you took a loss, you're still winning. Because when you ask God for it, it was already a yes. But you got to get back in agreement with the yes. 
Break up with the no on tonight. Hallelujah. I'll say that again. Break up with the no on tonight. Break up with what you thought you couldn't do. I don't care how old you is. You can go back to school. I don't care how much weight you gain. You can start walking tomorrow. I don't care where you started from. Break up with the no. Break up with the no. Break up with the no on tonight and align yourself with the yes. The promises of God are yes and amen. They are yes and amen. Hallelujah. This is your stepping out season. This is your season to leap. This is your season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are on the call tonight, this is your season to step out in faith. And that thing that he has called a yes, but your fear is making you think it's a no. Step out, man of God. It's a yes, thy good and faithful servant. Step out, woman of God. It's a yes, thy good and faithful servant. You have come before me. You have laid before me. You have worshiped me. You have prayed to me. You have honored me with your life. Your desires have been transformed. So the answer is a yes over your life. Hallelujah. The answer is a yes over your request. I just need you to believe and line up with the yes over your life. And break up with the no. With the no. Because God wants us to arise, people of God. The word of the Lord is already blessed. We thank him for his word. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your word on tonight. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, because we know, Lord God, that we align ourselves with the yes. Father God, we thank you for this holy night, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for your presence, Lord God, that is swooping through the phone, Lord God, that is swooping through the rooms where they are in, Lord God, wherever they may be in their car, Lord God, if they're in their homes, Lord God, allow your presence to saturate, Lord God. Hallelujah. You let the Trinity be made manifest in their life, Lord God. Lord God, reveal yourself to your people, Lord God. Lord God, send a fresh wind, oh God. Lord God, blow a fresh wind over your people, Lord God. Strengthen them where they are weak, oh God. Make them strong, Lord God. Strengthen their faith that they are able to step out in this season under an open heaven. Father God, we give you glory in this new year, oh God. Father God, we thank you that you're taking care of your people like never before. Father God, we thank you that you have never lost a battle and you won't start today. Father God, we thank you that we are realigning our thoughts to the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you that the abundance of God rests on us, that Abraham blessings belong to us. We thank you that we have been grafted in. Lord God, we thank you for your blood, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We plead the blood of Jesus over our life and over the lives of our family family and loved ones and friends. We plead the blood of Jesus. Lord God, we pray that souls be saved. Oh God, we pray that those who are lost, Lord God, that the ministering angels will minister to them on tonight. Lord God, we pray that no one slips into eternity without having an opportunity to accept you as Savior. Father God, we pray for those, Lord God, that the ministers be activated, Lord God, through social media in our youth, Lord God. We ask that ministers be activated on street corners now Lord God we pray Lord God that in this now season we activate now faith Lord God that, that if there be any souls that are on the brink of death in the hospital that the ministering angels come in that the nurses begin to prophesy that life goes forth in the nursing home that life goes forth in the in, in, in the inv with the invalid homes Lord God Lord God we pray that life goes forth Lord God where there are children oh God in the foster homes, oh God. Lord God, we come against that spirit of suicide on tonight, and we say that they shall live and not die. Hallelujah. Lord God, we say even now that life and hope be declared upon the, the nation in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, we pray that Christians become more bold in you. Lord God, we pray that they abide in the vine which is Christ Jesus. Father God, we pray that they have a word on their lips in season and out of 
this season. Father God, we pray that you activate them all as the preachers you have called them to be. Father God, we pray that you activate their testimonies, oh God. For your word says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So Father God, we pray that you activate testimonies now. That people may speak them and they may be able to deliver somebody in the name of Jesus. Father God, we call for your revival. We call that your kingdom come and your will be done. We call for your awakening in the earth, oh God. We speak it and we shift this atmosphere for the kingdom of the most high God. And for that, we give you glory. And for that, we give you praise. We declare it. And it is so. And so it is. Under the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. In his holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Exciting things on the horizon and welcome to the Solutions family. I created this channel with you in mind. I can't wait to begin sharing with you all. My prayer is that you receive relevant solutions for everyday life. See you soon. Love, Ebb.